And then I asked him whose plank was bigger. Damn it, Chuck! Stop playing with your booty or I'll loot your copper! Arr! This is Captain Dovetail, and this be Manhattan Wood Project. I was piloting me ship, the Sportin' Wood, up the Rio Grande River, following stories of a mysterious woodworker who made chests so fabulous they would please any seaman. I needed a chest to keep Sailing Master Chuck from playing with his coin purse. I found this master of wood and put him to work making a chest. I gave him the finest walnut, but the scurvy dog made me a chest completely out of one of the cheapest planks he could find, including hinges and a lock he designed to keep me out of it. Mr. Chuck will be recording how he made this chest, and then we weigh anchor and hoist the mizzen. Arr!
Now that you saw how I built the bank, let me show you how it works. It's basically just a normal chest like this. You can open and close it, no lock there. The hinges are both handmade, which I absolutely hated doing, never going to do it again. And, but the box top itself is what has the lock on it. You can pull it out, like so. And on the inside of the box, you see there's these pieces that I made that have uh, quarter inch holes. And they have eighth inch holes going all the way through them and through the box itself. You can see, hopefully you can see right here, there's two holes there, two holes here, a couple on the back. So that's so that you can stick a toothpick through and be able to access the lock like this from the outside. And I cut these grooves so that they would basically be right where the holes are so you wouldn't know to assume at first glance. Now the way the locks work, you should be able to see right here, you have the dowel on the inside with a little stop on it. And you take your toothpick, push it in from the outside, and it engages that. Now that's stuck in the little blocks that were in the corner of the bank, and it's locked. And you do that all the way around. So I'm just going to grab them from the inside here. And you do this after you put it in the bank, of course, and now the sucker's locked. And since there's no indication from the outside, unless you know which ones you have to push this way and which ones you have to push this way, you're just going to be sitting there all day long, basically uh, playing with the toothpick and trying to unlock it. You can make as many of these little locks as you want, throw them on there. It really isn't that hard. It'd be a lot easier on actual dimensioned wood. And you can make this as complex as you want. So the ones I want to build for my kids, I'm thinking about having four locks. And then I'm going to keep the uh, unlock sequence in the garage here somewhere so that when they put their money in the banks, they won't know how to unlock it very easily. So that way I don't have to deal with loose change everywhere. This was a great prototype for a project that I'm planning on building for my kids in the next couple months or so out of actual dimensioned hardwood. They're always breaking their porcelain or ceramic banks you know, or taking the plugs out and letting the money just spill out everywhere. And they won't let me keep the money, so they better learn to lock it up. It also let me figure out some methods and procedures that would be better learned early in a project like this than when I'm doing it on actual dimensioned hardwood. Some of those things were the sequence in which I drilled the holes. I, there's some better ways for me to do it, which when I do the next round of banks, I'm going to do it differently. It also taught me a lot of things, including how much I hate re how much I hate undimensioned wood and trying to work with it and make measurements, and how much I especially hate making my own dowels. Trying to lathe down a piece of wood from one inch down to a quarter inch and having one of them snap off when I was doing the lathing and then using the hand drill and trying to get it down to the final size Screw that. Next year, I'm buying hinges. I want to say thank you to Chuck for handling the camera. Did a great job, Chuck, when you weren't too busy playing with your tools. I also want to say thanks to Brian Gidney at Summers Woodworking and all the sponsors for sponsoring this 2x4 contest. It was a lot of fun uh, building the project, coming up with the idea, seeing some of the other projects out there, and the trash talk was definitely a lot of fun. I also want to wish good luck to all the other woodworkers out there making projects for this contest. It's been a lot of fun. There's a lot of creativity out there. I mean, Steve Carmichael built an actual working guitar. That's going to be hard to beat, even though I hope I do beat it. But good luck to all of you, and whoever's watching this at this particular moment, I hope that you get second place right behind me. Now, I just want known for the record, Brian, I did try the inkjet transfer. I don't know if you can see it. It didn't work very well, uh, probably just because of the paint that I used here. But there is a little something on there says uh, Summers Woodworking 2014. That's about all you can make out. Don't feel bad though, because I tried putting my logo on and you can't really see that much better. As always, you can find me on Facebook and on YouTube at Facebook or YouTube.com slash Manhattan Wood Project. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, give a thumbs up, leave a comment below. There's a lot of wood to be played with before I start engineering classes again in the fall. And I'm looking forward to a great summer of handling as much wood as possible. Until next time.
Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for not giving it a thumbs down, and I will see you on the next project. Since everybody else seems to be showing off how little wood they have, I just wanted to show off the scraps that I had left over. Over in the back, I have a few uh, sheets that are super thin from cutting off the round edges. Largest piece I have is right here, about 8, 10, 11 inches long. And then the rest is just basically cut-offs and attempts at dowels, like right here from one of my doweling methods. Awesome. <laughs> I might put that in. Avast me beauty. Want to find out if my Roger is jolly? <laughs> Arr, I love winches with low-cut tops. I really treasure their chests.